Hey everyone, Blake LaGrange here from Mastering.com. Today we are chatting with Josh Holland from Greenlight Studios. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how he was able to take his rough masters and make them real masters. So let's check it out. Before we continue our conversation and, and dive in even more to what we're chatting about, I wanna just kind of give anybody watching this just a very kind of brief, high level view of what you do Obviously, you're an engineer, producer, and so forth. So, I mean, just, just a brief kind of high-level view of, of, of what you do, who you are, and all that good stuff. Uh, well, basically, the main gist is the fact that um, I started in the music scene probably between late 90s, early 2000s. I started as a guitar player, and then progressively just like... I built a studio out of necessity for my own music, then started playing shows. And then people are like, where did you record? I'm like, I, I did, did it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they're like, well, you record us. And I'm like, wait, I can get paid for the gear that I'm buying for myself. Okay. And so I did that for many years. And, um, and we were kind of talking earlier, like being an empath in business was difficult as I gave away the shop a lot, but the last couple of years, I finally started really bearing down on the business side of things. And in the process, I basically had to pivot because being a rock and metal kid, well, hip hop is the big thing right now. And it's a lot easier to get hip hop clients because they'll come in for a couple hours and record versus a band that has to have like two, three days and you take their beer money away. So, so now I've been predominantly like the last two years, I've been full-time self-employed with recording studio as like predominantly tracking, mixing and mastering was kind of the I can do it to the level of most of the people that I hear, but I still didn't consider myself a mastering engineer per se, Sure. which is why this was why I bit. <laughs> sure. Got it. And your studio is green light studios, right? That's like your main. Correct. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Got it. So you've been doing that. This is full time, right? This is your day job, yep. right? Yep. I, my, my last day at my, I used to work in pharmacy. My last day was uh, June 27th of 2018. I love it. Yeah. And, and it was, it was great. Cause when I put the two weeks in, I actually, I, I left a card where it was like, um, it was like, sorry for your loss. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you're in medicine, pharmaceuticals. That's what you did. And then you pivoted and said, I'm doing music full time. So that's fantastic. So you've been doing that since 2018, Ju June, you said June, 2018, yeah, June, 2018 is when I went full time. I was all, and then in 2011, I went part time. So I'd been like, basically 20 hours a week and okay, the studio got it. Yeah, outside because it was like, I didn't want to just like throw total caution to the wind and have no right. buffer. Right. But I also knew that there's, there's never a good time. Right. And so sometimes you just have to be like, well, you just have to rip the bandaid off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's when you made the plunge 2018 June. Um, and so you've been doing this full time ever since, I guess, right before we start talking about your progress of what it's like to go through the accelerator and work together with you and I, but right before you and I chatted on the phone, Mm -hmm. I guess just kind of place, place me or everybody listening, you know, place us there. And where were you? Uh, what were you doing? What were the pain points in your mastering? Where was your mastering at before? I mean, all the kind of the struggles or things you were thinking through, whether it be business or mastering techniques before doing anything, before we jumped on a phone call, where were you, I guess? I mean, overall, I, I was where like a lot of studios are at where it's like, but I had a good amount of like regulars. So that was my main consistent income. And then you try and do marketing and stuff like that to grow the business. Um, but I really, I hadn't put any focus on mastering really, because to me, mastering was always kind of that dark art that like, you know, you find more misinformation than you do information. And so that rabbit hole just got me frustrated. So I'm like, you know what? My masters are good enough and I hate good enough, but it was like, I, from where I felt that I was, I wasn't finding the things to get me the tools I needed for it. Um, so basically it was just mainly focusing on like, I, like I, I've developed a good amount of like clientele in the area where because I use Instagram for marketing and, and then I'll play songs from people that like basically like every day or, or every few days I would do something where I would post like what artists I was working with. So that it gives them some publicity to the other artists I work with and basically building a community there. And so that's where a lot of my stuff was coming from. Um, and then, yeah, basically that's where I was, was just continuing to grow that, continuing to focus on social media to try and grow the business and like always trying to better the craft. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Got it. Okay. And then in terms of, uh, I guess, the major reasons or motivations of like why you, we had a conversation and why you dove into mastering accelerator. What were those sort of bullet points or thoughts that you were thinking through at the time of like, okay, I really would like to overcome this. Here's some problems I'm having with mastering. Like what, I guess, what was the scenario like for you before diving in? So there were two main ones actually. And, um, 
one of them was one of the things that you had said, because we were talking and we were kind of working out like financially, like, okay, so if you do tracking, it's this, if you do mixing, it's this, if you do mastering, it's this. And one of the points that you brought up that really kind of hit home, because I like for, for most of my building this business was like four to six hours of sleep and constantly working. And when we were talking, you're like, okay, so if you're trying to get to where you want to get to this income level, well, let's break that down. And you're like, okay, so if you're tracking people, this is your hourly rate, this is how much you can do. And if you're mixing people, okay, now you can do it per song. So you can kind of get a little bit more of a set rate, but you also have to find people that are willing to pay that for that right. set rate. And then you were like, and then there's mastering. And you're like, if you get good at mastering, you can do it like this many per hour, this, uh, this kind of a thing. And look at where your income goes to because of the fact that you're now doing it on a project basis, not an hourly rate. And right. you are basically being paid for how good you are. Yes. And, and that was one of the things that really hit home to me is that, oh yeah, because then that puts like most of the control back to me instead of the control just being, well, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and then on the Sonic side of it, it was just talking to you. You were easy to talk to. Like, like when we were talking, it was literally like talking to somebody I'd known forever. And I was like, that, like and I enjoyed that. So I, it made me really want to give that a shot because like, honestly, before this, I didn't want to master. Like I did it out of necessity. It right. was that thing of like, right. it's the very end. Am I doing this right? Um, is there something I'm doing wrong? Like, I can't really tell, especially once it started being like Spotify and YouTube and iTunes and all of these are different. Right. And so when you're like, here's this easily digestible form of go from point A to point Z, this will give you all the info you need. And that was pretty much where I'm like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Sure. Got it. So you touched on something that was very cool that we will kind of work through. And I would love to like, I guess, talk through that with you and kind of unpack or give more details of what you said. Because I think for you, it was very important to kind of be rewarded for your efficiency as opposed to punished for being efficient. So I think like, let's unpack that a little bit. Because like, I think, I think what it was from our conversation, it's like, if you're tracking a recording, it's like, you know, it could be 30 to hundred dollars an hour or whatever, and say it's 300 for the day or a thousand dollars a day, whatever that may be for certain engineers. And you work 10 hour days and make, you know, a few hundred bucks or whatever. And then you do the mix, like you said, and it's like, okay, I, if I can get my mixes to a place where I can do flat rate mixes that way, like now I can translate the hourly to where if it takes me 20 hours, it's not going to be worth my time. If it takes me four hours. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. So it's like, let's set that price. And instead of charging more or getting more hours in, why don't I just get really, really, really good at what I do at that price so that I can bang it out quickly. And then I think what we talked about is with mastering, getting, you know, four songs an hour mastered or whatever on a good day or on a bad day, even um, <laughs> the hourly, like you worked one hour and you're make, making as much as you would on like a day rate for tracking, you know, like you're not punished for your efficiency. I mean, I know I basically just explained it, but I guess for you, how, how, how did that hit you specifically? What were the prices that you were like imagining and thinking through? What, what was the excitement around that? I guess break down that logic just a little bit more because I think it's a fantastic sort of understanding of, of, what, of the main reason why you wanted to dive in is because it, of that, basically that equation. So I'd, I'd be curious to hear more of your thoughts on that. I mean, the, the main just comes down to like, as you said, like if, if you put a lot of time in, you put a lot of effort in, you put a lot of money in, and you still get paid the same because you can't change it. Like I can't change how fast somebody can tune their guitar. I like, I, well, I did get an ever tune guitar, but no. <laughs> <laughs> for that reason, but, but you, you can't change how proficient some people are at what they do when they're tracking. Like right. it, it could, like it may be, they get it done in an hour. They may get it done in four. And that frustration level, even sometimes when you're like, did you practice at all? <laughs> and then after the fact, having to go through, edit all this stuff. So you end up all these points of where it's like your skill set is good and it gives you better quality, but you're doing more of you're doing more of the stuff you don't want to do. Right. Whereas by building the skill set with mastering and, and, and mixing as well, but by building those skill sets, you're literally paid by how fast you are with the quality you get. Like a, um, a perfect example is um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Billy Decker, but I got to, I've gotten to meet him a few times. Sure. And like, like I think last I had talked to him, it was like 16 number ones in country and he mixes in like 15 minutes. Right. And, it, and it's like when hearing something like that, it's like, wait, what? You, that's, that's possible. And then actually getting to watch him do it at one point, And I'm like, oh, so, well, if he can do it, I can get to there. But it's, it's to your, the, the point of like your skill set and mastering, especially because it's on a song by song basis, right. like you, you aren't having to mix 
a hundred different tracks together. It's, it's like, right. like, as you were saying, you, you start with your single track and your, your goal is to get to where you can hear everything. And so I think I, I sorry, I can sometimes lose the brevity. On I, it. <laughs> it's a l- lack of brevity is fine with me. I, okay. I, I welcome it. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're, you're basically touching on just this idea of, you know, mixing or mastering a song, like for instance, mastering a song, like we talk about how to get it between eight to 12 minutes for one song, that idea, it seems like, okay, well, you're just rushing. Well, no, you're putting in an enormous amount of time on the front end in terms of your knowledge and your neural pathways that you're setting up to where that 15 minutes that you're taking for that one song, it's taking you 15 minutes, not because you're rushing it, but because all of the work happened before you touched the project. So, you know what I mean? So I, I really like that. I mean, that definitely feels more like a conversation because I'm, I'm just like, of course, drink this Kool-Aid as well. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, with drum miking, it's like, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's fun. I love getting drum tones, but yeah, it's just like, it's literally a matter of getting paid by the hour to set up drum mics and so forth. But with this, it's, I think it's a lot more imaginative and creative and I guess more effective because like, like you said, it's, you're not really getting punished for being efficient at your job. So that's really cool. So that's something that obviously resonate with you. Well, and I think that something else that just, as you were talking, kind of came to me is I think that one of the other advantages that like with mixing and mastering both, but especially with mastering, because the amount of stuff that comes through, but you get to be an artist again. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I mean, in mastering, right. it's, it's, as, as you've said, it's more objective. We're not trying to be like, okay, how do we make this feel? And that, like we do some, but most of that's the mixing part, but it still allows us to be artistic versus like setting up drum mics is kind of artistic. I mean, we're, we're getting a certain drum tone, but really it's, it's the technical, technical, technical. Yeah. Whereas mastering, we get to make decisions on how do we make this song the best it can be. Yeah. And then at the end, and part of the reason that I was kind of afraid of it for a long time at the end is that we have the final say. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, nobody else destroys our mix. Yeah. Nobody else, like nobody else puts their stamp on it. And then afterwards we listen and go, well, I like the mix better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Totally, man. So like, I guess in terms of like, I'm trying to put this on even more like, so you dove in, we had a great conversation. I was very much keen on trying to help you do what you were doing. Cause what you were doing with green light was really fantastic. And I was just like, okay, how do we accelerate that process and, and like continue the mastering side of things? So I guess kind of this, in this sort of portion or, 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 or section of like kind of understanding this stuff, what was it like for you, I guess, in terms of just going through the process and the content and the Q and a calls and not necessarily where are you at now? Not necessarily what are your skill sets now? I just mean, what was it like for you going through the process jumping on Q and A calls or, or, you know, stuff like that, or the community or, or getting through the content or action items. What were the things that were just sort of like reframing your mind or thinking through? I mean, what was the process like for you personally? It was very enlightening in a lot of ways because I really like how you approach through the content as like whatever you think, you know, stop. And, and, and I say that as somebody who like, I've been doing this 20 years. So I have lots of opinions. I have yeah. lots of things of like, well, I've done it this way, but when you said it that way and I'm like, yeah, well, if I'm going to try and approach this as a master engineer, not as a jack of all trades, then how do I approach that? Yeah. And, and, and I think I told you um, before the, the call started, one of the things that I loved was you made the comment about like mixing is taking all these things and bringing it to this one track and mastering is making sure that track, you can hear all of those things. And by, and when you talked about like bringing it into a new session because it changes the way you think about it. And there is a lot to psychology. Because yeah. if you're in a mix and you're doing your master in your mix, you just kind of touch up the mix into the master and then you touch with the master in the mix and it's this back and forth process. And for me as somebody who like would always like, I don't know the age range of people watching, but um, when I was a kid reading the choose your own adventure books. And then if you didn't like the answer, then you would like hold your thumb there and see where it was and then go back. And, <laughs> the choice. and, and, and that's honestly what like mixing and mastering it. together feels like, because I can always go back and change it. And I loved how you're like, the final mix is the final mix until it's the final mix, you don't do the master. And if somebody wants to remaster after they, they're like, oh, well, I just did this thing. Then it's a new file. Right. And, and I love like one of the examples would be from the, from the coursework where you used one of the songs with a drum and the only thing changing was the snare drum. Yeah. And you're like, see how you have to ma- master all of these differently. And something that little, I mean, not little, but little Yeah. that makes that much of a difference and you can't just like go oh you changed the snare drum oh let me just pop that back in and it'll be right. just as where it was right 
And like, those were the kinds of things for the, the detail stuff that I loved. Um, did I go off the rails yet? <laughs> no, dude, you're, you're on the rails. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, like, fantastic. Like, I, I'm, I'm very, very, like, I, I'm kind of one of those people where when I like something, like I talk about it all the time. So for, for better or worse, uh, but no, it's, it's been, for me, it's been great because like a lot of the things where some of the things were things I already knew, but I just wasn't putting into practice because I think this, uh, like working with you and having this course has kind of changed the business mindset a little bit more of the pushback because you did a really good job of outlining like when there's pushback, here's why, here's where it gets better. Here's why you shouldn't just cave. Cause as we talked earlier, I'm the empath by nature. Mm -hmm. So when somebody's like, well, can you just do this thing? And I'm like, well, okay. I mean, that's, that'll only take me like a half hour, but you know, add up a half an hour from 10 different clients. And I just, yeah, you know, like it takes a bit of time from your day. Yeah. And so there's, there's a lot of the things that, that even though they aren't directly business, they are, and it, it's actually helped me with my business with being able to push back more and not in a negative way, not like saying somebody like, no, you did it wrong, but more of like, Hey, can you fix this little thing in it first before I actually do something with it? Right. And I think, it, I think that's an important skill set. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you mentioned the Q and A calls. Um, I honestly, I apologize. I've been, I've been in on about three or four of them, Yeah. but it's usually like they were either going while I was in a session or something, but when I've hopped on, it's always been to where like, I haven't actually like contributed from it because I'm like, I don't know how the Q and A calls work yet. So I just kind of want to get the feeling. So I'm not like the one that everyone's going, God, this guy can't figure out what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I have been planning on getting more active in those things, but uh, it's just, I basically, because this is my day job and then trying to plow yeah. through the course in the off time. So it's just been like a lot of like, you know, eat, sleep, this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like the thing that's been the most helpful for you is just the kind of go at your own pace content and digesting that and applying it. You know, that sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, and, and I appreciate because the, the way that you did it and, and, and and just, just to note, I'm technically doing it wrong. So I want to preface with that. <laughs> okay. Um, because, because the, the way that you talk about it, and I think that if somebody's not like, for me, this is my day job. And so I yeah. wanted to gain all the nuggets that I could quickly and then go back and redigest kind of like skimming yeah. a book first and then come back. I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so for me, that's why I'm doing it that way is because I wanted to be able to, to take care of my clients like the quickest that I could. And Good strategy. Back, yeah. And, 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 but it, for the people that haven't been doing this as long, the, the way you've laid it out is week one, do this. Okay, get this set. Okay, week two, do this. And because the you do a really good job of, okay, here's songs, here's action items, here's things to do, do this. And, and I think that a lot of the time, the action items are the hard part for a lot of people where it's like, well, so I guess I'll just go online and try and find something that I can master. And you're like, here, bulk dump. <laughs> right and then and and you'll even do it on the like when watching the instructional portion to it you'll even go through and be like i'm gonna do this section for you so you can see how to do it now go do it yourself yeah and and i think that it's it's also cool that how the the whole early stages you're like i don't know what your idea of mastering is i'm not gonna tell you yet right. just go <laughs> dive in like because like i grew up to where it was like the beginning of the internet kind of and so like it was hard to find info online. Right. So I learned a lot by the school of hard knocks. And yeah. Those are the things you don't forget. Right. Like something goes wrong in a session and you have to try and figure out why that'll never go wrong. again. You, rem you remember that. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. sets up a, it sets up a neuro pathway that you're unable to get rid of. So yeah. it seems like you've benefited mostly from the, just the kinesthetic learning aspect of things where it's just like, go do this, go do this and get kind of thrown in the fire, notice the mistakes you're making and then like go back and start to like progress and think through that. So yeah. I think, by the way, just a quick comment, I think that's a great strategy. I'm a huge fan of reading the beginning of the book, the end of the book, if it's a nonfiction, just like informative, and then like skimming through things and reading the table, just like getting a high level view of things. Being a mastering engineer, I kind of have to get the 30,000 foot view of everything now. <laughs> I'm like never in the weeds. I'm just always big picture and then in the weeds, big picture in the weeds. And so having to do a lot of that. So I actually appreciate the approach. And you have plenty of years of studio experience. So it's just one of those things where you can get away with that, if you will. In terms of, I guess, okay, so, so you're quite a bit way like through this process, right? Like you've gone yeah. through a lot of the content. So if that's the case, and it is, I guess, where would you say you're at currently? I know that there's always room for improvement, but where are your masters at currently? Where's your business mindset at currently? What are your, your mental template for mastering? 
I mean, the outcome of your final master's, I mean, currently as it stands today, as opposed to where it was before, where, where are you at? Uh, well, well, I can just say like directly as far as like what I switched to, to doing the master's inside a new project and like going through and using a rough master that was my old method and having that to beat and having the reference tracks. Um, also like, like learning how to read the PAS analyzer, like, cause I'd been just using like what was ba like in Cubase already, but that actually kind of gave me something that, cause I, as I watched you mix through stuff, or, or master through stuff and I could see like what it's changing and how it's doing it so like a lot of that helped for that but it's it's funny I've actually had a couple of my clients that because like I said when I like something I talk about it so I've talked to my clients about hey I'm doing this mastering thing so right now I'm not going to charge you extra for the mastering because right. I'm I'm building this as a new portion but let me know what your thoughts are and so far multiple of my clients have literally been like I already liked the sound that you got me, but damn, like that, that works paying off. <laughs> cool. And, 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 and part of that also is um, that one of the things that you mentioned in the whole thing is sound gym and the, the frequency trainer. And that's something that like, once I found that like first night I went on there and I'm like, okay, let's check this out. And in five minutes I purchased the year and I'm like, this is part of my nightly routine now. Right. And because I think that, I think one of the things that, uh, um, and I can't remember if this was before the call or when we we're on the call. One of the things I think a lot of people want is a, a quick fix and an easy button. Right. And there isn't one. Right. Like there, there, there is no easy button. Like it's, it's, it's hard work and some people are lucky and they get it faster. But like, even where I'm at, I've been doing this 20 years. I'm going on sound gym and I'm going through stuff and I'm like, okay. And you're in the 50th percentile. I'm like, not good enough. Keep going. <laughs> 60% nope not good enough but but it brings back kind of that video game element of challenge so it's not just beating your head against a wall trying to get better but it actually gives you something to shoot for right and and so that in tandem really helps because then I watch all your stuff while while going through all the stuff and then I'm actually actively doing something to train my ears and so I think that combination really like I'm I'm super pre like honestly just you telling me about that was probably worth the worth the price of admission anyway. Mm -hmm. But the content is I, I love the content like I go back through and watch stuff just when I'm doing other things just to kind of reiterate it. That's fantastic, man. I mean, so I'm I'm curious and I'm I guess curious and excited to hear like what's the plan moving forward for you? Like how are you going to continue to apply all this mastering knowledge? Like give me kind of the big picture vision of green light and or maybe just you as a producer of. How are we going to implement this stuff with mastering? What are you most excited for looking forward to, even in the content stuff that you haven't gone through? What are the things like futuristic thinking? Like what, what are those sort of things that you're excited about? Well, I mean, to, to start with, I'm excited to be proud of masters instead of going, I feel like it could be better. <laughs> so, I mean, like, yeah. that's one of the big ones. Um, but like goal wise, I've, I've transitioned from like, originally I was like, I wanted to work with more bands again and be able to like actually build the songs, stuff like that. And, but then every time that I would, it's like some of the bands are super easy going and a lot of fun, but there's also some, there's a lot of drama and yeah. I, I, I'm kind of getting too old for that part. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm like, so I'm like, okay, so if I focus on mixing and mastering, that means that I can get it from anywhere. And then that opens up a whole thing because I know multiple of the other studios that are in the area here, they're basically like quote unquote competitors. Right. But if my mastering is at the level where it's like they can't even compete with it, the mastering is going to speak for itself. Right. And I could actually even hit up the other studios and be like, hey, look, I don't I don't care that the this artist that I worked with is now working with you. That's fine. I don't mind. Right. Hey, do you want me to try and do the masters for you to get that last level? Because just throwing ozone doesn't count. Cause, cause Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, I've, I've had artists that are like, hey, can you make it louder? And I'm like, oh, I'm not back to the studio yet, but I can when I get back. And then they message an hour later. Oh, I just had a friend throw it through ozone. It's fine. And I listened and it was totally distorted. And I'm like, right. yeah, oh, I'm glad I spent that time on the mix. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the quick, quick fix, easy button that just doesn't work. I mean, yeah. I mean, one strategy you could be applying and we've done this before is local studios in the area where it's, you basically give them like a particular coupon code or setup where it's like any of your artists that you work through, you know, I'll give you 30% off or even 50% off discount if they master with me. And then you go, you can either do one of two things. One, you can just say that you have this awesome hookup. The artist has a great discount and they come back to you with more work. Or two, you can keep the extra 30% as a referral fee and just make more money doing it that way. And so I think applying that strategy is probably a good idea, you know, with what, yeah. with what you're doing well, for and, sure. And especially by, with the, with the way that I do my, um, like with the way that I, I've been on break for a little bit for trying to get all this stuff taken care of, but when, right. when being on my normal Instagram thing and I'm posting all the time, which gets a lot of interest and circulates and then they tell other people and they tell other people. And so by doing that now with mastering, one of the things I'm looking forward to doing is going on and being like, 
here, here's how my rough master used to be. And this is what you guys already liked. Here's where it is now. Here's why to come back. And it's, it's, it makes it really easy when you can just like have that outlet to be able right. to broadcast. Right. Because, because nothing says more than like, when it comes to audio, nothing is going to sell you more than somebody hearing the difference. Right. Of course. Yeah. There's nothing better. I mean, we built our business based off of like, here's what it sounds like before. Here's what it sounds like after like mm-hmm. click, like move forward, like <laughs> click, like, do you want this? Yes or no? <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, being able to provide that is one thing for sure. And then the marketing side is just pouring gasoline on it. You know, it's just, exactly. just here we go. So, well, awesome, man. Okay. So I guess only a couple other things that I, I'm curious about, I guess, what would you say to those who are sort of in your shoes where they're full-time, you know, mixing, producing, uh, recording, even a little bit of mastering and all this. And and they're kind of on the fence or thinking about diving in to kind of like work with you and I through this mastering accelerator process. I mean, would you recommend this to them? Like what, if they're on the fence, I guess, what would you say to them? I would honestly say like, I mean, honestly, whether you're trying to be a mastering engineer engineer or not, whether you're just trying to be in production, you're trying to be in mixing, this course teaches you frequency. This course teaches you how to look at things, like, as you said, from a 30,000 foot view. One of the things that I think would have been beneficial for me longer ago with that kind of thought, and, and it's not like I haven't heard it before, because it's like reading personal development. Like you yeah. can read 30 books that all say the same thing, but it's how somebody says it that makes right. the difference. Right. And, and the way that you walk through things in it and the personality that you have with it, like, and, and it sounds totally hokey, but it's like, to me, it's like the first time we talked, it felt like there was already kind of a connection. And, and, and like, I felt like I was talking to a friend. It totally. didn't feel like I was like an underling of like this person, like, yes. Um, okay. So it, let me get your question. Okay. <laughs> no, that's dumb. Why would you do that? Like, like you're, you're very, like, you're very open and you're very blunt, but you're not unkind about the way you do it. Cause you want be, it's, it's like, I would say kind of like how Gary V is. It's yeah, like, sure. Like it's it's the empathy, but also it's still your job to do the work. Like yeah. if you don't do the work, it's still not going to get good. Right. Um, but I honestly like I because I, I think I told you at the beginning where it's like I was on the fence not because I didn't want to, but because I was on the non-essential business shutdown. So right. Like, I don't know when money's coming in. Right. And then we talked, and I was like, ah, this feels like a really good opportunity. Like it's it's like there there was that because because we all kind of like we get those senses of like yes no. Of course, and for yeah. me, from, from talking to you, I was like, I feel like this would be a really good idea. I don't know with where that's at, but you know what? There's only one way to find out. And, and I've always been a big believer in you have to invest in yourself. Like there, there's no substitute. Right. And, but that also goes back to the easy button is that I think that the, I think the people that will benefit the most from what you do are the ones that are willing to put the work in. I've always been a big believer in, in, in building yourself up because nobody can take that away. Right. And, and so for me, if somebody's willing to put the work in, this is one of the best things you can invest in because between the way that you teach, how hands-on you are, like you're in the Facebook group, you do the Q and A calls twice a week, like you're very hands-on for questions and it's, it's, the information is easy to digest. Like, and if it's not at the time, just come back to it. Um, but I, I would alternately say, and I think you, you and I talked about this before I even took the course is that I think that if you're not a hard worker, this is going to require work. Like, right. This is going to require you to actually do the thing, not just talk about doing the thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, but that being the case, I honestly think like, I am 100% happy with the investment that I made. And I, I was from the first week that I started working on it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the real investment is that you just invested in yourself. It's really betting on yourself because mm-hmm. If you have a roadmap, that's just a roadmap. The results come based upon how you travel down that road. So really, you've made an investment in yourself. And so for you to say that, it's basically like, I don't regret investing in myself. (laughs) So (laughs) I think it's fantastic. Like you're only going to get results if you put in the work that you've done. So it's just fantastic, man. I mean, in fact, you have a lot of experience. I guess this is the kind of last question I have. You have a lot of experience in this. You have 20 years basically in doing this, three years now full time. For somebody in your shoes um, who's kind of maybe, maybe even just like a few steps behind you, what would be like some personal advice that you would give to them in terms to help advance their skill set, their career themselves or whatever? Like what, what's just some advice that you've been able to receive yourself and it's really helped you? What would you like to pass on and just give advice to other producers? I mean, a lot of it, I mean, it sounds like the corniest thing in the world, but do the work. 
Like, like, and, and I, let me use an example. Um, one of the old bands that I was in, we, I basically had gotten frustrated in bands and I was like, you know what? I'm tired of just like ha- being the one person who's willing to work and drag everybody else along. And I was like, you know what? These three friends of mine are all in their own bands and that guy, what if we build a band? Yeah. And so we built that. And, and this is where it ties in, I promise. <laughs> but, it's, it's cool. <laughs> but, but basically it was that since all of us were that guy, the problem was is that the work ethic went down uh, yeah. because everybody was used to doing everything. So now it's like, oh, we'll all each pull our own weight. But then it's like, guys, like, no, we, we still have to work. Like, right. We didn't just make it because we're all good. Right. And, and so the, the reason I tie that back is that like, even if you're good, if you stop putting the work in, the skills will falter. Right. Like, like it's, it's not something you do once and then you're done. It's something right. you have to continually do. Right. So for me, yeah, as, as you said, I've done this 20 years and then I took this mastering course because I still want to continue to grow. I want to find something else that's going to, to bring more value to me. I think at the end of the day, the biggest thing is just putting that time in and, and like whether, like I think edu- like spending money on educational stuff or, or, also with artists, like, I mean, honestly, I like, I think personal development is really big for like for artists and they're usually the ones that push back the most. Totally. But, but I think that in general, that's one of the things that keeps me from being that like stereotypical, like artist that's depressed about everything. And it's just because it, it's the thing that feeds me in the positive direction. Right. So it's like me and, and just having that offset. Just do the work. I mean, it's yeah. so it's hard though for a lot of people. So I, I mean, I very much appreciate that. I, I, I obviously totally agree with you. Betting on yourself is something I've heard from you. Investing in yourself, do the work and you could be as great. You could be great, but you have to be disciplined as well. So you're somebody who has all of that and congrats for making this this far. You're obviously you the opportunity. Oh yeah. I mean, you're obviously <laughs> going to continue doing great things and I'm personally devoted to helping you with whatever you need to do. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say? I mean, kind of last, last thoughts here and you're, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, overall, I, I think it just comes down to where like, one of the things that was important to me was when you and I talked originally and you're like, what do you want your life to look like? Like what, you, what, like how much are you looking to make per year? And then you were like, okay, well using that, here's numbers on how to make that work. And, and I think that sometimes the hard thing to do is to look at where your life is, where you want your life to be. Mm. And it's easy to make excuses for, well, this thing didn't happen or this person screwed me over or this thing happened. But at the end of the day, none of that matters. Right. At the end of the day, it really comes down to you're here. You want to be here. How do you get there? Right. Reverse engineer it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I feel very fortunate that I was one of the ones that, that you had reached out to about that initial consultation. And because it was kind of like out of the middle of nowhere and I'm like, Oh sure. That, that sounds cool. Yeah. But then when I talked to you and, and the conversations we had, I've never really had a mentor it was just all school of hard knocks and right. hit your head against the wall, find a new way to do it. It's paid off um, so far. So it's good. <laughs> Keep doing it. It, 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 it has, <laughs> but, but on the same token, like having somebody like you to be able to bounce ideas off of, like, you know, these things, it's, it's not me throwing an idea by one of my friends who's a musician. That's going to be like, Oh, well, you know, yeah, I think, I think your hi hat's too far to the left. What? That doesn't move the needle, right? <laughs> right. So, so I think that it's, for me, it's been good to be able to have somebody that I know has the experience. Like that's, that's one of the things that I've loved about some of the ed- other educational programs I've done too, where when you work with people that genuinely care about your success, it makes it a lot easier to work harder towards that success because somebody already believes in you. And right. I know that sounds totally corny, but I know it, it's very true. And in like people who, who are going to come alongside you will, I mean, I feel like I, I'm, I feel like I have the liberty to tell you this or, or freedom, if you will, permission to speak into <laughs> this. It's if I don't feel like you're going down a good road or if I can't help you, like I'll just tell you. <laughs> so, yeah. um, oh, absolutely. yeah, the feel free to, yeah, the, the freedom and liberty and permission to sort of push back and say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this, <laughs> but, but if you know that you can help, it's like, I really feel like I can help. So anyway, it's, it's, it's been seriously such a pleasure just chatting with you and seeing what you're doing. You've come a long way and there's a lot more to do as well. And I just think you're going to crush it either way, man. So I guess, thank you. <laughs> like I said, I'm hundred percent one-on-one willing to, and, and excited to commit to continuing to help you with whatever you're doing, man. So virtual high five <laughs> yes, as, <laughs> as we can and uh, great chatting with you, man. It's been a pleasure and and looking forward to many more.